next muscle we're going to look at is the infraspinatus. So here's the spine of the scapula and it's the muscle below the spine of the scapula. It is, it attaches quite a broad muscle, fan-shaped, and it runs down to almost to the bottom of the, of the um, scapula here. It's a broad attachment, but the muscle itself is quite thin. It then runs across like this and attaches into, so coming like that, and, and becomes a tendon. All the rotator cuff muscles become a tendon around the point that the acromion starts. And it becomes a tendon and then wraps around the lateral part of the humerus. Now this is a slightly complex muscle because the muscle fibers in the top run like that. They run parallel to the ground, as it were, and parallel to the spine of the scapula. But the muscles from the fibers from below actually come up at an angle. And this has practical implications, which we'll talk about. There are three triggers in the infraspinatus, and these occur. The one is here, the second is there. So this is in the horizontal portion of the muscle and uh, this is in the thinner part of the muscle. This is in where the muscle is its thickest. The third is a smaller trigger lower down which is in the uh, fibers that run up at 45 degrees. The pain from this refers into the front anterior part, slightly lateral, and runs much further down the arm. It may dribble even into the, the uh, lower forearm and into the hand. Very, very common triggers, really common triggers to find in the, um, in the rotator cuff. And as such, the nice thing is that this is a very nice available muscle. So again, the principles apply. You search for the trigger by running, you, you understand that it's going to be in the zone. So if you start here, you run your hand across at right angles to the long axis of the fibers of the muscle. And I'm searching for the, I feel a thickening in and a tight band. And so as I press and I run backwards and forwards, I'm watching my patient's face and I'm looking for, there, I feel something. Can you feel that? Yes. Yeah. So I'm on a trigger here. This is quite easy to find because the muscle is really quite thin. So Again, the same principle applies for ischemic pressure. I push hard enough so that you can feel it. Then when I release the pressure, tell me when you don't feel it at all. Yeah. It's gone. So at this point, I'm now going to augment the pressure of my one thumb with the other, and I'm going to gradually increase the pressure. You tell me if it starts to hurt. Yeah. That starts to hurt, so I back off. Now. And, and if you just relax, just relax. Is that feeling comfortable? Yeah. Okay, so tell me if it starts to hurt again. And I'm just gently pressing in. And as I press, I'm feeling the trigger itself. And what I feel is the trigger is actually starting to soften. I'm increasing the pressure. Is that sore? Yeah, a little, little bit sore, so I'm going too fast. So I've got to go slower. And no rush at all and gradually gradually there that's feeling softer how's that feel that's good. that's good yeah and you can feel it just releases releases underneath your thumb or your finger so the same principle would apply here but if I so wished I could do a myofascial release so my thumb or my finger or my two thumbs but let's use thumb and finger I find I need to search for the trigger it doesn't feel like you have one here. So let's assume the trigger is there. 
I press down. Now my fingers are, are going to widen out along the long axis of the muscle. So like this, I, as I press down, in my mind's eye, I'm searching for the trigger itself. Once I'm there, I push the distal interphalangeal joints together and gradually my fingers part. The tips of my fingers part. And as they part, I stretch the soft tissue and the muscle underneath. The third trigger, which is down here, interestingly, it may refer this way, but often refers along the medial border of the scapula. And so this is a very common place for people to feel pain. So this trigger actually is quite important and is quite a common trigger, but not as common as these two. Okay, and again, treatment is the same. Ischemic pressure, myofascial release, or a cold pack. So now we learn why you want to take into account the direction of the fibers because what you do with your cold pack is you start at the insertion and you run across like this and down into the pain reference zone. You do two or three runs like that and then you go lower and you run up again into the pain reference zone starting from the beginning from the origin through the triggers and down into the pain reference zone. Now you do two, two or three runs like that. Now this muscle you stretch in the same manner. So the, the top part of the muscle fiber which runs parallel to the supraspinatus is stretched in the same way with internal rotation and extension lifting up, you relaxing and this part of the muscle stretches. To stretch that part of the muscle you actually bring the arm over and round and so holding the other side like that. So this part of the lower part of the muscle where the fibers run up at 45 degrees you stretch by adducting and pulling the arm across the body and that way you stretch these fibers. Once you're finished, apply your hot pack and you leave that on for a good five minutes. Once you've done that, you re-stretch for the, for the top fibers, internal rotation, extension, for the bottom fibers, adduction, stretching.